Welcome back to the Weekend Marathon. Now, the country is scheduled to host the 41st Ordinary Session of the Executive Council of the African Union and the 4th Media Coordinating Meeting. The event, which is scheduled for July 14th to 17th in Lusaka, is expected to attract 13 heads of state and over 8,000 foreign dignitaries. In readiness for this event, the Lusaka City Council was tasked by the local government minister, Gary Combo to remove trading booths in some parts of the city. This brought more questions on whether the traders were engaged and what next for them. So joining us to discuss this is the Director of City Planning in uh, Lusaka from the Lusaka City Council in Chibesa Namwinga. Good morning. Welcome to the Weekend Marathon. Good morning. Good morning, viewers. All right. Now, let's uh, talk about this... this um, event or what, what this occurrence that took place where the council has embarked on a cleanup ahead of the AU summit uh, for next week with the removal of some mobile money uh, booths just in the last couple of days. Were the traders, the owners of these booths, the people in there engaged prior to the demolitions? Uh, yes, they were. Um, of course, we can't engage them directly, but they do have an association that represents them. So before we moved in to um, re relocate their booths, we did engage the leaders of the uh, Mobile Association of Zambia, as well as the service providers like MTN, Airtel, Zamtel, and so forth. They've actually been engaged in quite a number of high-level meetings. So everybody was on board because part of good governance is you have to engage the people. You don't just make a decision and move in. You have to engage them first so that they are ready for you. But definitely they were engaged through their leaders. Okay, so is this standard procedure or it's really is because of the AU summit? Or maybe it's just part of the campaign, the uh, Keep Lusaka Clean? Uh, I would say it's part of the Keep Lusaka Clean or rather Keep Zambia Clean as a whole. Because, you know, this was launched some years back. And even as a city council, we're mandated to keep our city clean. We've received quite a number of complaints. I can share with you letters where people within the CBD especially, they complain about how there's congestion in the city because of how these mo mo mobile booths are um, located. There's traffic congestion, congestion for pedestrians. Shop owners have also been complaining. So we're responding to that. So it just so happens that the AU summit is around the corner. But I can assure you, this is an ongoing exercise. Well, there seem to be a lot of sentiments, uh, you know, flying around that really the engagement, maybe the communication is not enough. Because every single time we always see this demolition, there's always someone complaining like there wasn't proper engagement, there wasn't proper thorough consultation. What is the standard procedure and why do you think this sentiment keep on reoccurring? Okay, I would say that I think with any change, uh, you know that there's always that resistance because maybe because of where you've located your booth, you feel you're making um, quite a bit of money. So there will always be that resistance. But I can assure you, engagement is there. I can give a practical example. Last night, uh, while some of the, we were, I think, moving those uh, booths that, are, what can I say, have been abandoned, some service providers, their leaders were actually with Lusaka City Council. So it's not something that we're doing on their own. If there are sentiments, I think maybe it could also come from a fear that they are being chased, but I can assure you they're just being relocated to another place. So does this mean that even these, these mobile booths that are being um, established, they're not in line or uh, following the procedures at the Lusaka City Council? People just put them up wherever they think they can put them up. Yes, majority of them don't come through the council because I can give an example like uh, ShopRite uh, in the CBD. You have over, well, maybe like over 60 of booths, which doesn't make sense. If they had come through the council, we would not have arranged them in such a way. Mm -hmm. So many of them just uh, put them where they want to put them because they feel it's convenient for them. Mm -hmm. So now we want to come to a place where we take charge they will still be able to c conduct their business, but in, a, in an orderly manner. Uh, and, and also, I mean, yes, you, you say you've been receiving these complaints, the CBD and wherever, but did it really have to take the hosting of the, the media meeting next week for the council now to come through and, and do this all of a sudden? No, that's what I'm saying. It, it just happens to be a coincidence. But we've been, this has been, in, we've been planning all along because even these meetings took place way before um, the, the summit came about. It just happens to 
I guess maybe it's a good coincidence. And of course, there's no harm in well, cleaning not, not for the up. traders, though. Are you right? <laughs> Definitely not for the traders. No, they'll, 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 I think when they see that we mean well, we are not trying to chase them out of the CBD, they'll still have business. Because like in every, I, I think... For us, especially as planners, there's always a designated place for everything. We have a designated place for a market, designated place for res for residential areas and that kind of a thing. Though I think it's just a mindset mm. because you can't just set up where you want to set up. It has to be in an ideal location. And people will now know that, oh, we now find the mobile traders here and they'll come to you. So it could just be fear of the unknown. So you earlier mentioned that they're supposed to be relocated to a new space, trading space. Tell us about that. Uh, we've identified certain spaces within town. Uh, one of the areas, I think, behind the post office and just in some uh, some alleys, yes. But they are very accessible to the public, so it's not that they'll be hidden. Yeah, they are very accessible to the public. Okay, so I mean, and I think it's not only within the central business district as we commonly know it as town. We've also seen, I think. Uh, near Vander Hill Mall, if I'm not mistaken, around there, we've we've seen those there. So, what happens to those traders who are around those those areas? Yes, so those will also be relocated to more convenient areas, because as you know, Great East Road, it's uh, it's a, it's a presidential route and that kind of a thing. We need to also maintain some order. Yes, there will probably be one or few, but most so of you, them will be relocated. You, you have targets you've targeted certain areas for this particular time frame well we've targeted certain areas but as i'm saying it will be an ongoing exercise because you'll see you, for you you mentioned the presidential you know area now it rings a bell why people are saying it's because of the au summit like you're just targeting those places where you know delegations are going to be passing because you've just mentioned that, you know, that side is a presidential... But, but whether there's an AU summit or not, ma'am, uh, we always have to... That place is just supposed to be clear. So you'll see for yourself, even after this, this is a, it is a permanent thing. We're not just doing it for sure. And from here, we'll move from the CBD to also... Because even within residential areas, we do get uh, complaints. So we're going to roll it out to the rest of the city. Okay, so for now, it's just the, those areas. So you, you go on and also take down all the, the other ones in, in the different parts of, of the country, of the, of the city? Let's not use the word take down, relocate. And why we say take down? Because... To designated places, because even within residential areas, uh -huh. not everybody is comfortable to have uh, these services just outside their homes because of security reasons. So we need to relocate them to an area where you have access in a neighborhood to know that, okay, we find our mobile booths here. So I, I can assure you this is an ongoing exercise. But, and that's why people also ask whether it's really a good coincidence because it's, it's only within a certain, certain parts of the city mm. that this is happening. If it was really a good coincidence, people would have seen this happening in different parts of the city as well. But it's only within that area where it's believed that the, the, the visitors will be in the country will be passing through. But uh, it goes back to the, area, the issue of congestion. That complaint has been there way before the AU summit that there's congestion in the city. And even, I think, certain times, we have moved in to relocate, even within the city. We had areas where it was so bad because uh, people would say it's forming a blind corner and the like. Those are the areas, usually Cairo, Cha Cha Cha, Freedom, that's where we get those complaints from. And we, when we say damage, because that's the, that's, that's, that's the perception out there, that's, that's as far as people know, that... They were demolished because that's the word that's been used. They were mm. demolished or taken down. And Bob asked the question, if it was really about relocating, they wouldn't have been taken down the way they were. So um, when, even when they, are, they have to re relocate, will this be at the expense of the council in terms of reestablishing these, these booths and putting them up? That's why we've engaged the service providers. Uh, some of the service providers, like I think in last night's operation, are actually... Do, helping to to do the relocation themselves because those are their agents. So this will the, the the service providers are actually the ones that are also assisting us. That's where this engagement comes in. No, but I think the aspect we should be concentrating on is when you are removing. There's always 
it's always damaged. I don't think every time we're watching some of these demolitions, it doesn't look like you can even use that booth again. It doesn't look like you can even use that particular table that you are using to trade to another place. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's why the aspect of damage comes in. Like, mm -hmm. is it at the expense of LCC? Are, are, are you going to help? You know, when the, the particular booth or that particular training space is damaged, when you relocate them, whose responsibility is it going to be for them to be set up again at the new designated place? Okay, will you point out the disease? But that's why the service providers... They are going to be responsible to make sure they give a booth to that particular person whose booth was demolished. I think that's something the service providers will... Because uh, if damages take place, it could be... It's not that force is being used. Sometimes some of those booths have been there for quite some time. So maybe there's no other way around it. So that's where the service providers have taken a keen interest and said, okay, give us some time in certain areas because maybe they'll know how they would want to go about it. But for us, it's basically we have to, our responsibility is to find an alternative place for them. So is, are there any time frames that have been given for, for this? Because um, for some people, this is a livelihood. This is how they, they survive. And they're probably waiting. Should we wait until the the 17th of July or when the the media meeting is done and even after that obviously we can even predict that it will not be uh, probably within a month after that happens so is there a time frame as to when these people can expect to be back to trading uh, th that's what I'm saying mm. it's an ongoing exercise even today when it's moved we have to find you another place so we have not asked anyone to stop trading because as you've put it, it's a livelihood. But this is where the engagement comes in. Because uh, if, for instance, uh, just an, uh, for, as an example, if we're not able to relocate a certain one, maybe we'd say, okay, let's look for, give us time to find an alternative place. Yeah, what we don't want is to disadvantage anyone. No one should be stopped from trading just because of what's happening. That's what I'm saying. It's an ongoing exercise. But you know, for, for some of them, they'll probably they'll probably have to because now they have set uh, making preparations for a, a, a different location, the expenses that come with that. So obviously, there'll, there'll be a stop unless maybe for those who have maybe more than one, they have in different locations and, and whatsoever. But there'll be one mobile booth down, and they have to now start making plans to have that booth that is down operating elsewhere because they cancel. Took them, took it down for them. So now they are waiting, saying, if the council is going to intervene, when is this going to happen? Uh, can we can we expect a certain time frame, or there's no plans around that yet? Yes, the plan is as I'm, I keep emphasizing, this is an ongoing exercise. And mind you, we're not just removing them for the sake of removing them. We're removing them because we're trying to keep the city clean. So this is also going to, you see, as the areas open up, especially within the central business district, you will see that it, it will be easier for even our officers or our workers to clean. Because that was what was also causing part of the confusion. Because we keep getting the complaints. Lusaka is dirty, there's a lot of garbage. How are you expected to clean? Maybe give us uh, a typical scenario. Give us an example. Run us through. I think uh, Chumaka's question for the time frame is really important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I don't want to picture a situation where my booth day is taken down, is damaged, mm -hmm. and then two days, three days, nothing's going on. I think that's the time frame that we need. What hap What's the procedure? When you remove particular boots in a designated place and you've scheduled that okay these particular traders will move to a, what's the time frame what normally happens in that frame because uh, i think it's important yeah it is important and that's where i hope after you've interviewed me because for me i'm emphasizing on we're relocating them to designated places so i think that question will be best answered by the service providers because those are their agents so we've been even with them, we've been also asking questions about uh, them sharing with us uh, the number of agents they have and that kind of a thing. So when we started this uh, conversation with them, this is also something they should have uh, put in place. So meaning the, the, the council uh, took the booths down, but the responsibility now goes to the service providers to put them back up again? The responsibility is that the council has found alternative places and since it's a partnership with both the mobile association as well as the service providers so a solution will be found by by the three the three wings if i can call it that mm. yeah okay thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning okay thank you so much
We've been joined by the director, city planning at uh, the Lusaka City Council in Chibesa Mwinga. We've been looking at the demolition of the mobile money booths that uh, we have seen taking place right here in uh, Lusaka. So uh, based off what's happening and the, the calls that have been going on, I guess this is expectation in different parts of the city as well, not only uh, around the central business district. We have more coming up on the weekend marathon. We'll be uh, closing up with our last two trends and also getting into our local news recap. Just stick around.